this mechanics physics question has a few different parts to it. We have some SUVAT, we have a collision where we have to work out the change in momentum, we have forces equal to rate of change in momentum, and then we also have an explanation question on this at the end. All right, so we have spectacle lenses can be tested by dropping small steel balls onto the lens as shown in figure three, and then checking the lens for damage. We're given a few different things, the diameter of the ball, we're given the mass, the height at which it gets dropped. So for 4.1, we're trying to work out the density of the steel used for the ball. Density is equal to mass over volume. So then we have the mass, the mass is given to us, that's 16 grams. So that'll be 0 0.016 kilograms by dividing by 1000. The volume, so this is a sphere, volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. The radius would be 0 0.008 meters. So that's just dividing this by 2 and then dividing it by 1,000. So then we can put this in. So our volume would then be 4 over 3 pi times r cubed, so 0 0.008 cubed. And that gives us 7460. Right, so for part two, in a test, the ball bounced back to a height of 0 0.85 meters. So remember that what's happening here is that we're dropping the steel ball, it collides with the lens, and then it bounces back up. We know we're dropping it from a height of 1.27 meters. So actually, if we want to work at the speed just before impact, then what we're gonna to have to do is consider the distance it falls rather than the distance it bounces back up to. The distance it bounces back up to depends on the material that it collides with. But to work out what the speed will be just before impact, we'd have to know the distance that it falls. That distance would be the 1.27. It says in the question that it's just dropped. It says that over here, it's just dropped. It's not thrown down or projected down, it's just dropped. So then the initial speed would be zero. So the reason that I'm using SUVA is because in this scenario, we have constant acceleration, the, it's in free fall. The acceleration would just be 9.81 downwards. So let's say the downwards direction is positive. A is then 9.81 positive. And we're trying to work out the speed just before it hits the ground. So we can use V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. V is then the square root of, so U is zero. So this will just be 2AS, 2 times AS, and that gives us 4.99 meters per second. Right, for 4.3, we want to work out the speed of the ball just after impact. So now we're considering the ball has just collided with the lens. It's now going to be traveling up after the collision with a certain speed that I'll call U it then rises up to a height. The height that it rises up to would be, we're told from earlier, is 0 0.85. So this will be 0 0.85 meters. The speed at the top, if we're looking for, if we know that the maximum height is 0 0.85, the speed at the top will be zero. So that will be our final velocity. V would be zero. And then we can use SUVAT. So initial speed is what we're trying to work out. Let's say that upwards is positive, acceleration is then minus 9.81, final speed is zero, displacement is positive 0 0.85. That means we again use V squared is U squared plus 2AS. U squared is then, so V is zero, so V squared is zero. So U squared is minus 2AS, which is minus two times minus 9.81 multiplied by 0 0.85. So if we type this in, and then we square root both sides, because that's what u squared is equal to, so then we can square root both sides to get u, and we end up with 4.08. So that is the answer to 4.3. For 4.4, calculate the change in momentum of the ball due to impact. So change in anything is always the final of that thing minus the initial of that thing. So final momentum minus initial momentum. 
So this will be equal to the mass of the object times its final velocity minus the mass of the object times its initial velocity. So I can factorize out the mass. That's the same. It's the same object, so the mass is the same. That doesn't change. We get this. Now for these kinds of questions, a very common mistake is to forget that velocity or momentum is a vector, or velocity and momentum are vectors. So we need to consider the signs of vf and vi. So again, whenever we're considering vectors, we have to define a positive direction. I'll just say upwards is positive for no reason, just we have to pick a direction and stick with it. So the final velocity will be the velocity after it hits the lens. That was the 4.08 positive because it's going upwards and then the initial velocity is what we had down here 4.99 that's the velocity just before it hits the lens that will be negative because it's going downwards so then the change in momentum will then be mass multiplied by I guess I'll change the mass now so the mass was 16 grams so 0 0.016 multiplied by, so VF was 4.08 minus minus 4.99, so minus minus 4.99. Type this in, and we get 0 0.145. Okay, for 4.5, we're told the time of contact so time of contact with the lens is 40 milliseconds. Milli is 10 to the minus 3. So divide by 1,000, we get the time in seconds. We're trying to work out force. So if we're trying to work out force, we have to use rate of change of momentum. So we have the time. We have the change in momentum from earlier. Divide the two things. So 0 0.145 is the change in momentum. Time is... 0 0.04, and that gives us 3.63 newtons. For 4.6, explain with reference to momentum why the test should also specify the material of the plinth the lens sits on. So the plinth is this thing here, that's the lens plinth, so the lens sits on top of that. So the question is asking why do we need to specify what material that is? So one reason is that if, for instance, this material were not stiff, it were not rigid, then that would increase the time of collision. As you can imagine, if this were like, let's just pick an extreme scenario, let's say this is a pillow, then what happens is the steel ball, when it hits the lens, the lens and the steel ball will compress down into the pillow. The ball then might bounce up a little bit. The time of collision will be much higher. And if the time of collision is much higher, well, if we think about our force equation, if we increase the time, so if we have delta t going up, that will decrease the force. 